Sunderland, northeast England. That's a big lady, yeah? That's a big lady. Here, 40% of adults are already too fat for their own good. The average weight in this country is now overweight. I'm sorry, but I'm savouring every taste of this. Obesity and the illnesses it causes are expected to cost the UK taxpayer £50 billion a year by 2050. Don't look after myself and I just eat. I just want that to stop. Home to five of the nation's ten fattest towns, the North East is facing an obesity epidemic. But Sunderland Royal's weight loss ward is fighting back. We've got one or two operations that can cure half the problems in the NHS. It's going to change my life for the better. One of the busiest NHS obesity units in Britain, last year its surgeons performed over 600 procedures. And every week, the queues get longer. But it's not a quick fix. It feels so crap, man. Mentally preparing for surgery is tougher than people think. A lot of the patients are secret eaters. They even come into us and hide what they actually do eat. Leaving some without the operation they want. All we want is their honesty. We can't help them if they're not honest with us. But for many, their last chance is Sunderland's weight loss ward. The obesity team at Sunderland's Royal Hospital sees 30 new overweight patients a week. On the front line is sister Kim Common. I really don't know what it's like to be fat, so this is why I want the suit on, to have more empathy with the patient. The coming and the sweating, the short of breath. These are the trousers. They find it difficult to go to the toilet. Going out shopping and people calling them fat slag. <laughs> Awkward it is. <sighs> I felt ill when that suit came off. I had a headache. Obviously, I was dehydrated. Thank you very much, sir. Walking around, trying to sit in normal seats. No, I'm not going to get in. Try to use the toilet. I can't reach my backside. I can quite understand how the patient would become housebound. Having founded the unit, over the past 12 years, consultant surgeon Peter Small has pioneered keyhole gastric surgery in the northeast. There is no medical problem that's causing people to be obese. The vast majority of people are obese because the calorie intake over time has not matched the calorie burn. The usual patient that we get has been trying all the diets under the sun. They've been on all the medicines under the sun and they've failed. And they are just crying for their life back. 98% of people who go on diets fail. If we get the right people, 98% of people who go for surgery succeed. Sunderland's weight loss ward is like a conveyor belt, moving new patients through while hundreds wait to climb on, taking their first step towards an operation. There are guidelines that we have to work to. I'm afraid if you don't meet these, I cannot offer you surgery. The weight loss surgery within the NHS is justifiable purely on cost alone. You've got patients who've got serious medical problems with the diabetes. The people who have had heart attacks, they've got angina, and they can't move, their joints are shot. Do you want to spend your taxes on all the medicines that they're having to take for all the conditions that they've got? Uh, how about their motorised wheelchairs? How about the adaptions that you're going to have to do to the houses? Ah, come on. Anybody who has got an ounce of common sense and how they look after their money will spend to get the best return. And the best return is actually from surgery. 43-year-old Deborah Adams is in for surgery. At her heaviest, she weighed 27 stone and now suffers from common obesity-related diseases, including type 2 diabetes. Deborah had a good job, but after a fall four years ago, stopped work and piled on six stone. It stops you from going out. Literally the only place I go is I go shopping once a fortnight. That's it. Whereas before, I would literally, I wouldn't be in the house much at all. I would be out and about all over the place. First day following surgery, mm -hmm. you will have one litre of water and you'll then progress to a period diet the next day. I mean, I've got a wheelchair to go out and about, but I feel self-conscious in my wheelchair because I think people are Look, look at her, man. Fat, whatever. Deborah's husband, Colin, is now her carer. Tomorrow, Deborah will get a gastric sleeve irreversible surgery to remove seven-eighths of her stomach. I don't like to think of how much weight I've actually got to lose 
And so I think of that, I think I've got one to Colin. I've got a Colin to lose, you know? Um, you know, wait here, you wait, darling, not you. All of this is so worth it if, if at the end we sort like, get this off and even just get back to work part time. It's taken Deborah two years to get an operation, not just because of the high demand for surgery, but because the unit needs to thoroughly assess each patient. They've never really admitted to what they actually do eat and they don't like admitting. I suppose I do, really. You don't realise, do you? A lot of our patients are comfort eaters. If there's a bit of cake, we have some cake. The secret eaters. Or down the middle of the night, cooking food, making cheese on toast. Sometimes I do graze, sometimes I have the odd bar of chocolate, sometimes, you know, not often, but I can eat a bag of crisps. You have nice. chips, I don't have chips. <laughs> <laughs> but people that have had a weight problem most of their life, you normally find there's a reason why they're fat. And till you get to the root cause of that, you're not going to get rid of the weight. Hi, is that Terry? Yeah. Do you know exactly what your weight is? I was roughly 47 stone. It's not that often we are getting this type of person through. We've got to get some weight off. And if we don't take them to surgery very soon, the likelihood is he could die. <laughs> I were initially live in my living room and my kitchen, really. <laughs> Terry Gardner is just 29. Six foot seven, he's put on 27 stone in 10 years. <laughs> That's the bathroom door. Obviously, I can't get through there <laughs> with my growth and that, you know. <laughs> go into the garden, I have like a seat. Don't really go venture anywhere else. It just goes to show I've got myself in this state. <sighs> when Terry was eight, his 39-year-old dad died of a heart attack. His mum became ill, and eventually Terry was taken into care. Hard. <laughs> Very hard. Emotionally hard. At the moment, I feel like my weight's just eating my life. If I don't do anything now, I just feel like I'm not going to be here. He's got it to be constantly eaten on, on all the bad foods, chocolate, crisps, takeaways. That's normally what they do. I don't think he's really admitted to that himself. That's ten years ago, like, you know, 1920 stone. Yeah, I was lucky to find Leah. There's even times when I've actually turned around and said to me own wife and that, why are you here? Honestly, ten year on from that, I'm this trapped in my own body. Um, she's coming. Terry is so critical, he's being taken onto the weight loss ward for an indefinite stay. He's their heaviest ever patient. We're bringing him in to get him to confront his addictive behaviour. Was there um, bouncy castles and that there? He's almost pathologically obese. But why? What did you get in your jubilee? Pat lunch box? Oh, Chris. Oh. Terry's children, Reese and Chloe, are the age Terry was when he lost his dad. But being fit enough to take them out is now a distant memory. We're hoping the kids will cope with not having the dad around for a while. I'm just wanting things to go back the way they were. Sunderland Royal's weight loss ward has been built big for big patients. We've had to have all the doors widened. With the region's waiting lists growing, staff from other hospitals come to find out how it works. Sarah Jobling, the ward sister, shows off the unit's super-sized assets. These two areas have been made larger, so we're going to accommodate a chair and a bed. At the moment, I've got a bed upstairs in the equipment wash, which I've had to have delivered specially, and it's quite a, a big bed. The latest acquisition in her ward's war on weight is a reinforced bed for Terry. Our beds that we currently have only have a safe working load of 55. It takes up to 71 and a half stone. Too big for us to keep on the board. And obviously a big chair. We call them the love chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Fine love chairs. 
Most, most dressing room trolleys only go up to 24 stone. Ours goes up to 50. <laughs> <laughs> Erica Barber, 56 and weighing 21 stone, has been with the weight loss team for over a year in the hope of getting a gastric bypass. She works during the week, but her Friday nights are special. Buy on the Friday, but I will not go out again all weekend. So by the time the Monday comes, I've got nothing in. Just pig out. Well, I split up with my ex about 15 years ago. <laughs> I live on my own, so once I shut that door, that's it. All I do is then is eat, watch the TV, play the computer, and go to bed and sleep during the day as well. <laughs> during the week, Erica manages to control her eating. But come Friday, the weekend routine starts, and she heads upstairs to her den. Put me peaches in the fridge because I like them cold. I've got some fresh cream cake. And these roasties. Fresh cream meringue. The chocolate mousse. You can eat those two, no problems. Don't look after myself and I just eat. I just want that to stop. My fresh peaches. You have to do that. With obesity-related illnesses, including type 2 diabetes, Erica is eligible for surgery at Sunderland. But before she can be put on the list, she must reach a weight loss target set by the team. All we say it's about commitment, and all we ask is around about a five kilogram weight loss, which is about, what, 12 pound to a stone. That's all we want. The patient has got to change lifestyle. We've got to change the diet. I always think it tastes better out the tin. But after a year, Erica hasn't managed to hit that target. So she's been given one final chance. My next appointment to do is critical. I must have that five kilos off because I don't know if they're going to let me carry on forward. What am I doing? I don't look after myself. I go to pot. So it's like a vicious circle in there. Are you ready for the end bit? Still binge eating, Erica's got just one week left to hit her weight loss target. Can't beat that. Sunderland Royal is home to one of the UK's biggest NHS obesity units. It offers radical surgery to thousands of patients desperate to lose weight. Most come in for a few days, but at 47 stone, Terry Gardner is the heaviest patient the team has ever had. I haven't got a problem lifting this leg, it's my other one. And they've taken the unusual step of admitting him for an indefinite stay. At high risk of heart failure, the team is restricting Terry to 1,500 calories a day in the hope he'll quickly drop his weight making safer surgery possible. He's been housebound for a year, so the first job is to get him moving. Good. About a little bit higher. With Terry on the ward, the team can keep an eye on what he eats. But even here, snacks are temptingly close. They have the lady come round with, like, the trolley for the papers and that in the hospital. If I decided I wanted crisps or anything, I could have basically had the pickings to what was on the trolley. But I didn't. How's the bed? Good. I was actually in it last night. <laughs> so if you were to put one finger on what put your weight on most, what would you say it was? Comfort eating myself. Why were you comfort eating? My dad passed away at a young age and I was about eight year old and everything, so... We had mentioned briefly to you the thoughts of using a balloon in your stomach. Yeah. What do you think about that? I want to change. And I want to change the way I am because I'm not happy. Well, we can help you. Mm -hmm. I can't do it for you. Ah, oh, no. OK. Big lad, isn't he? And it sounds as though the penny has dropped with him that he can't go on living and eating as he wants. He's obviously had a lot of life events. He has been comfort eating. I'd be looking like a chicken if I ate more chicken. <laughs> looking at him from the end of the bed, he's not as daunting as I thought he might be. <laughs> like every obese patient, 
Terry must lose weight before the team will go to the next stage, a temporary procedure called gastric balloon insertion. If we can put a balloon into him, that will help because it's just some degree of restriction which may make him feel full, hopefully make him recognise that he's not hungry all the time. The balloon should help Terry eat less, but he must also learn to eat healthier food and exercise. What do so many of these a day? He'll see the team's psychologist, and once he's lost weight, he'll need a permanent operation. But for now, surgery on Terry would be too risky. <laughs> Proving she's ready for surgery, Deborah Adams has lost nearly four stone in two years. Oh I'm breaking it, but... <laughs> A typical Sunderland Royal patient, Deborah has hit her 40s with high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, joint pains and high cholesterol. There's overwhelming evidence that this is probably one of the most effective treatments we've got. It's one operation that deals with diabetes, hypertension, uh, cholesterol problems, fatty liver disease, joints. If we get them off the medicines, we've recovered the cost of the operation in less than two years. Every operation costs the NHS about £8,000. It's keyhole surgery and there are two main types, a gastric bypass and the gastric sleeve. So yeah, so I was trying to get the liver up now. Part of the problem with weight loss surgery is that you never know exactly what you're going to find once you go inside. Deborah is having a gastric sleeve, one of the newest procedures, designed for patients who eat abnormally large portions at mealtimes, and there's no going back. Seven eighths of her stomach is being removed permanently. Well, that's just looking at the dead bit of stomach, which we can't leave inside, so we have to take it out. And that can be the most entertaining part of the operation. What's left of Deborah's stomach is stapled into a tube that will hold a few teaspoons of food at a time. From now on, she can expect to lose up to a third of her 23 stone. Her target, one stone a month. Ever younger people are turning to the weight loss ward, hoping for help before obesity-related diseases set in. Overweight, but otherwise healthy, 19-year-old Sophie Lang has been working with the unit psychologist. I don't like myself because obviously I'm like quite big and I think I put makeup on to hide my face. I think it makes me feel a bit, like a little bit more confident. I think I feel ugly with my face without makeup on. I hate it. <laughs> a few times she's sort of said, I wish I wasn't here. I wish I was dead. I wish I was skinny. I wish I was this. I wish I was that. Currently just over 18 stone, Sophie has always struggled with her weight. I was never really skinny as a child. I've always been quite big built. She used to say, I've got nobody to play with. Because they all call us fat and they don't want to be my friend. I used to get bullied and then come home crying and my mum used to say what's wrong. And I, like sometimes I can't express my feelings. And then um, I used to maybe go down the shop and get loads of junk food and eat it. I felt depressed about eating all the food, like crisps, biscuits. It's been hard, really hard. I'm just looking forward to the new Sophie, hopefully. Today, Sophie's going to the weight loss ward to be fitted with a temporary gastric balloon. You look lovely. Your little bunny face. Nervous. You wouldn't be normal if you weren't. I love you. It's gonna be fine. Okay. It's gonna change my life, really, isn't it? For the better. I hope it works. The balloon will be fitted for six months. It should help her eat smaller portions, while Sophie confronts the root causes of her overeating. First, a local anaesthetic to numb her throat. So this is the balloon, and it's connected to a tube. When we position the balloon in the right place, we can push fluid, inflate the balloon. Now, Sophie, from now on, not to speak, yeah? Deep breath in and out. There's plenty for space for you to breathe, yeah? To check Sophie's stomach is healthy and empty, surgeon Ali Alhamdani inserts a camera. All right, Sophie. It's going to fill about 500 ml of your stomach, so you won't be able enough space to eat large meals. 
You can see now, is it really sitting on the top part of the stomach? I'm going to take the camera out. The hope is that smaller meals will make Sophie feel full and the excess weight will drop off, preventing obesity-related illness and expensive invasive surgery. For Erica, who's struggling to give up her weekend binges, it's a last chance to prove she's ready for weight loss surgery. I have to make sure my mind's ready for this operation, and actually it's ready now. It's because I know that that is what I need, and the, the bypass will help me to, to stop eating like a pig. Previously, Erica weighed in at 138 kilos, or 22 stone, 11 pounds. Today, if she hasn't lost five kilos, 12 pounds, she'll forfeit her chance of surgery. Don't you dare go up, go down. One, two, seven point three kilograms. Brilliant. Nine kilograms from the last time. Great, okay, thank you. Nine kilos, one and a half stone. But an operation is a serious step and her surgeon well, must be sure she's ready. I've lost my weight. I know that, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with you. How did you do that? How did you manage to do that? Don't ask me, but it, it, well, I do binge at the weekend. I'm sorry about it, I do binge. Okay. But at work, I don't. And you know what the bypass is? Yes. Fine. Yes. The operation will bypass up to two meters of intestine and reduce her stomach to the size of an egg. Or simply, we separate the stomach into two parts. So we connect the Despite part losing the weight, before her surgeon can do the operation, Erica must be mentally ready. And she's been talking with a psychologist at another hospital about issues from her past. She had a significant past psychiatric history. She had a history of being abused when she was young. This is a major concern for us. And not an insignificant number of people sit in your clinic who have been subjected to mental, physical abuse and some of that sexual. And that can well be part of the trigger for their weight gain. And that needs to be explored. You can't wipe out the past, but you have to know that the operation isn't going to deal with that. You need to deal with that before the surgery. So if you can phone them and ask her to, yes. to send me her opinion, when I get this letter, we can proceed ahead. Yes. Having lost more weight than needed, it's looking up for Erica. Yes. Final agreement from the psychologist would clear the way for surgery. That's it, smile nice. <laughs> for Erica, it calls for a small celebration. I'm going to go to the supermarket and I buy just a little. I want a fresh cream cake and I'll have, I don't know what else I'm going to have until I get there. I look. <laughs> I bet I have my peaches. <laughs> it's not many, but it's the ones I like. So I'm going to have a banana. Mm. You made it then. I've been busy. Terry's been on the ward for almost two weeks. But before surgeons can fit a gastric balloon, he must commit himself to losing weight. I've just had like a chicken dinner. It doesn't feel you much like. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's weight should be falling fast, but it's not. Uh, 304.6 kilograms. He was 304.2. Yes. Mightly surprised that that's all he'd lost. He's on a low calorie diet. He's having three small meals a day and a bit of fruit. For Maureen Boyle, senior dietitian, his slow progress is baffling. It doesn't look like you've lost very much at all. What have I actually lost? It has only changed about a pound. A pound in weight? Yeah, because on what you're eating, I would expect it to be down a bit more than that. Mm -hmm. We'll get it to work. I just feel so crap now. I do feel for him. I don't want him upset. That's not what we've got him in for. He's struggling. He's not happy with the diet. But it'd be worth it if he saw something on the scales. It just feels like I've just had the confidence all the way back. But the ward nurses have their own ideas. He's got to do walking exercises with his Zimmer frame at least three times a day, but he's not doing that. He says that he's never signed a contract, so he doesn't need to do it. We found out today that when the trolley comes round on the morning, 
every day he's been buying two packs of quavers and fizzy pop. That's not really what he's meant to be eating, so it's just frustrating for us. I can't stop trolleys going on towards. It's people wanting to have that there and majority rule. If I had my way, the trolley wouldn't be there, but I don't. Two days later, time for Terry to face the truth. Three or four point four. Friggin' it, man. I'd love to know how I've done that. Put two pound on. So what sort of things have you been eating? You was on chicken dinners, weren't you, the last I'm time? I'm always on chicken dinners. I put two pound on. Yeah, but... Aye! We all have friggin' chicken. I'm telling you. It's not like I've been, like, secretly eating or anything. I know what you're going to say before you even bother to sit down. How have I managed to put on that 1.8 pound on that? 1.8 kilograms, yeah. Yes, it's the chicken that you're serving us, I'm telling you. But overall, what we've lost in, what, two weeks you've been in now, haven't you? Uh, it's, 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 it's poor, I know. That hospital bed has been hired at £100 a day. Being in hospital alone is about £150, so there's £250 a day for us to try and assess what's going on with Terry. And we now know the answer. Starting to catch up. He's cheating, he's not sticking to what he said. <laughs> and he's going to keep cheating. He's not cheating me, he's cheating himself. Does that mean I'll be having chicken again for dinner? Yeah. Come to a point where I'm going to have to sit down and I'm going to confront him. By 2050, 55% of Britain's adult population are expected to be clinically obese. Today, the weight loss ward at Sunderland Royal is packed with people turning to surgery for help. And your bowel is working. But before surgery comes self-discipline. After 19 days on a calorie-controlled diet, Terry Gardner is the same weight he was when admitted. 47 stone, 6 pounds. Consultant surgeon Peter Small has had enough. And is this everything you've been eating? Yeah. Everything? Yes. We've got a slight problem then, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Because that, if I was on that diet, I'd lose weight. No. I know I've got an underactive thyroid and everything. Yeah, I mean, having an underactive thyroid doesn't explain no. not losing weight when you're on a low-calorie diet. You can't think of any other calories are coming from. Mm -hmm. We generally see weight loss. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then we know people are getting calories in somehow. Yeah. Liquids or sweets, crisps, grazing. Not, not buying anything off the trolley that comes around. No, just papers and juice. It's uh, 100, 150 pound a day in hospital, 100 pound a day for your bed. Yeah. So it's 250 pounds a day. Mm -hmm. You told me you wanted to get your weight down. I do. Yeah, show me. The rules are rigid. Before the team will insert a gastric balloon at a cost of three and a half thousand pounds, Terry must start helping himself. Well, he wants to bite the hand that's trying to not feed him then. <laughs> we know he's been buying sweets off a trolley. Until he's honest, it makes it very difficult for us to manage him. I'm sick of him saying I'm cheating and everything. When I'm not, it's not my fault that we're fluctuating. We're here to help them lose weight, we don't do it for them. I've had lighter people than him die on the waiting list coming in for surgery. At his age. 250 quid a day. Not lost one ounce. And that's the question, the value of that. Anyway, it will be time limited, that's for sure. 250 pound a day, how's that my problem? It's not my problem, but, you know, it's not cost to me. It's cost to the NHS at the end of the day. Um, I can't say how that's my problem, so why bring it up? Terry's got just one week left to prove to Peter Small he's serious about losing weight. Erica Barber is visiting her sister Anna, who's also waiting for gastric surgery. But for Erica, the news is not good. I've had a letter saying that I'm not ready to go. I will have to go and see another psychologist. And it could take quite a few months. It's taken months now. I know, I know. To get this far. Well, Why do you need that? Because it's not just, yeah, but it's not just uh, having the operation, it's, it's the mental attitude of, you, of the person as well. 
There's nothing else up here wrong, is there? It's only because of uh, you not being ready to diet. But there was a little bit of abuse. Yeah, well, that's all gone many moons ago, oh, but yes. at the end of the day... I don't even think about it. I don't yeah. even dream about it. That's probably maybe why you ate. So I said, well, is it that, because I was abused, is it because that's what I'm eating? There's you. Erica yeah. was not yeah. abused by her family, and her sister was not a victim. The abuser is now dead. It was only when I was nine. I've blocked most of it out now. You know, don't even think about it. I don't like to talk about it a lot. I think that one's me there. It's been uh, a hard road for all of us, really, from our childhood, basically. Mm -hmm. Load of shit and crap. But I don't, I don't go there. Yeah. 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 Erica must now switch to a psychologist at Sunderland Royal, because if she's going to get the surgery she wants, her binge eating will have to stop. I know I shouldn't be sitting up here. That's, that's a waste of my weekend, binge eating. This is going to be the last time that I'm going to buy like this. Mm. After this weekend, that is it. A week after her operation, Deborah's on a strict diet of mush. Can't take really any bigger mouthful than like literally just the tip of the spoon. And you can feel your stomach filling up straight away. And after six months being housebound, she's up and about. To be able to just to go to the shop is <sighs> it's unbelievable. In ten Richmond Super Kings, please. I was never one to stay in the house. I was always the visitor. Never the visited. But you said she lost 46 stone. I didn't stone. say I lost 46 stone. Sounded like it. Since Mr Small had the stone tracked with him, his weight loss has improved. I think we saw him realise that if he didn't actually start looking after himself, I wasn't going to do anything to him. When he got that message, he started behaving. Terry has stopped cheating and his weight is dropping. He will now get his gastric balloon and his ward echoes to the benefits of the operation. I had the gastric balloon in yesterday. So where's the wind? <laughs> but before his balloon can be inserted, Terry's weight must be checked again. You were 297.9, now you're 295. So you've lost 2.9. Just an idea. Well and truly awful stone in half. That's an expensive stone. It's taken us about three weeks or four weeks. Well, obviously, I won't be eating a deer at all. A lot of money in bed, huh? but it started. That's the important thing. I was speaking to him yesterday. He's never lost a stone before, so he's pleased with that. Uh, I'll be pleased when we get a lot more than one or two stone off. At 46 stone, Terry is the heaviest patient ever given a gastric balloon by the team. At this weight, General anaesthetic could risk heart or respiratory failure, so more permanent surgery is ruled out for now. On the bottom of your stomach now. The team believes the balloon will help Terry get down to a safer weight for surgery. The stomach is a muscular bag. It will stretch given time with the balloon sitting in it. So we've probably got a two to three month window where we'll hopefully educate Terry to keep his portions down. Right. We're at the lower end of the esophagus, so we know the balloon is below it. And that's it blowing up just now. A board of chicken. It's a worrying thing for him to say. Probably won't be able to eat chicken for a few weeks, but there we go. <laughs> right, okay. Well done. See you on the board. Our average weight loss with a balloon is about two stone. I have seen eight stone come off with them, and I'd hope he'd be closer to the eight than the two. The first three months will be critical. Terry must eat smaller portions, or his stomach will stretch, and he'll be back to where he started. I think it's there, isn't it? You keep, the door keeps pushing it. And I just feel like walking like that all these times. <laughs> two weeks living with her gastric balloon, how good is that if you've lost some weight already? And Sophie has already lost three and a half kilos. 
almost eight pounds. But her diet of mushy food is making life tough. I feel sick when I walk down there. Probably because it's moving yeah. in your stomach. I think that's what it could be. Well, if it doesn't work, it will work. <laughs> it will work. Might not. It will. I know, but I can't see where it coming off, look. As weeks go by, Sophie moves on to solids, but can't manage much. If I eat the rest, I'm just forcing it down, and then I would dob on it. Three months in, she seems to be getting through as much food as she did before the balloon was fitted. And today, it's time for her midway checkup. Sophie has put on two pounds, making her total weight loss since the start just over five. Hi, Sophie. She should have lost at least a stone. You're going to have to try and refocus. You know what you should and what you shouldn't be eating. I mean, what was on your Sunday's dinner yesterday? Uh, everything. Yeah, well, but like go. carrots, turnip, oh, yeah. cabbage. Everything, all your veg. Yeah. You know, she can well, all quite happily yeah. eat the whole lot. What about Yorkshire puddings? Two Yorkshire puddings. Mm -hmm. But, there but why couldn't ones. you not have them? She likes Yorkshire yeah. puddings. Well, obviously this is where you're not going to get the weight loss. You can't just expect the surgery to give you total weight loss. It's about you changing your lifestyle as well. She said she's not snacking any longer, but she is eating large volumes. I don't know whether Sophie's in denial. It is right, what, what Kim said. Like, I do take charge, don't I? Like, I, I, I do. But sometimes you don't. Yeah, but I have cut down on what I ate. You're still eating big portions, and you're still eating crisps. Must be hard for a mum. We, as mums, want to feed our children. But Sophie needs to take responsibility. I'm not eating crisps like I used to. You know, it's her that's putting the food in her mouth. Same as all you've lost your yeah. determination. Welcome to Sunderland Royal Support Group for Weight Loss Surgery. Thank you all for coming tonight. Very much. Right. Cheers. These are what I used to weigh, under a size 28. Weight loss surgeons at Sunderland Royal have operated on over 2,000 people in the last 12 years. Each month, patients get together for support and to share their stories. This is, this is my before and after picture with my band, and that's what I look like now. And this is me and my auntie Liz in my old winter coat. <laughs> my name's Deborah. Um, I only had my gastric sleeve four weeks ago. It's still at that stage where it's puree and it's, it's gross. It's vile, it's horrible. I've got diabetes as well, and so far my tablets have been halved. Three months later, and Deborah is walking without a stick. It's almost magical. You've got a new person, and they're going to be anywhere between four and six stone lighter. They're moving, the diabetes is almost uncertainly if the type two disappeared and they appreciate what they were doing wrong before the operation. Them the only things I know that I like. Not uncommon to them sitting there and saying, you know, I was a greedy pig before the operation. I, I just didn't realise how much I was eating. Don't get to be as big as I was by not eating cakes and chocolate and biscuits and things like that. And I mean, I love it for a nice cup of tea and a packet of biscuits, you know what I mean? One or two, I'd have the packet. Since the operation, Deborah's tastes have changed. I've got no appetite for anything sweet at the minute. It's no fancy for it at all. Thank you very much. I measure the success of the operation by the size of the smile on the face that comes through the door. <laughs> They're just different people. Weight's down to 106. You were 170. It's unbelievable. I'd, I'd never, ever thought I would get down to this weight again, ever. It's good, good to good, see good. you. Thank you. And keep walking. I will do. See you in a bit. See you later. Cheers. Bye. But results are not always so positive. After six months, Sophie is back to have her balloon removed. But her weight is the same as it was three months ago. Sophie's lost two and a half kilos, five pounds, and now faces surgeon Kamal Mahawa. I wouldn't hide the fact that the weight loss with your balloon has been rather disappointing. I would eat breakfast, and I never used to. I'm not snacking as much as I used to. 
he thought was a lot. Now it's hard as any. Obviously, I'm disheartened that it hasn't worked. On a night, I sit down and I go through my mind asking why. First month weight loss was due to her being excessively sick with the, with the balloon and not just tolerating the balloon. You don't have to work with the balloon in the first month. Balloon will do it for you. When balloon is settled down within your body, then you have to use it as a tool. But clearly that, that didn't happen with her. That's the, the balloon more or less totally empty. She's not ready. She's just not ready. I want to have a look at the balloon. Do you want to see it? I think there is an age problem. I think the younger ones are looking for us to do an operation that will make them lose weight without them having to try. I don't lose the patient's weight. The patient loses the weight. And that goes for a 19-year-old as it goes for a 90-year-old. I don't really want to put myself through anything like that again, because it has been a hard six months. I think I might just try and do it on my own. With the prospect of future surgery gone, Sophie will continue to get to the root of her eating problems with the unit's weight loss psychologist. By sticking to his diet after having the balloon fitted, Terry is now 44 stone, having dropped three stone in two months. I've been able to do things which I haven't been able to do within the last seven, eight years. Before I didn't have like the confidence to go outside or anything, obviously because of my weight. It's been remarkable for the amount of weight I've lost. The last time I couldn't get through the door, I was like, stuck like this. <laughs> and slightly squeezing. What we had to do with Terry, as with all the other patients, is get him to realise he's the one that's controlling his problem. There's times where in the hospital I did, I got a bar of chocolate and that, because I was sick of what I was eating. If we can get him to change his mind, I believe he has. Uh, it's for a stir fry. And is sticking to the regime that we've asked him to stick to. We're going to change him. He's going to change himself. He's going to enjoy himself. He's going to have a new life. It's his last chance, really, he says, to make changes. He says if he doesn't do it now, he probably never will. Losing the first three stone has boosted Terry's confidence, and it's become clear to him what went wrong. During the fourth, fifth year, me and Liam were married, we went through a bad patch. When they Emotional breakup, like you know, I went my way, she went her way, basically falling out of love. We got the little oranges, and that's what basically triggered me eating. I felt like I was heartbroken and everything, so I did actually just want to eat and eat and eat and eat, which I did. I did emotionally turn to food. After waiting three months. It's Erica's first appointment with the weight loss psychologist. She won't get on the operating table until she's dealt with her childhood abuse, which the team think is the root cause of her binge eating. Erica is now getting out at the weekends and still losing weight, but not as fast as she was. When I come out today, I suddenly realized I'm gonna tell the truth. I was deliberately not taking my insulin to lose weight. And the reason I was doing it is so that I could still binge eat while I was uh, not taking the insulin. And it really is bad, because I could have died. It's taken nearly two years for Erica to realise the only person she's cheating is herself. All we want is their honesty. We can't help them if they're not honest with us. It is something that they've got to get their heads round. I want to do it. I don't want to have to wait and wait and wait. Uh, but sometimes the waiting is better for you than the pushing it forward. They do need that time to be able to work with us and understand the life change that it does entail. I will get there. I've been at it for nearly two years now. If it takes another two years, I'll still be there. It is a life event, having the surgery, and people should be a under no illusion that this is a simple fix. Terry has maintained his three stone weight loss 
and hopes for a gastric bypass next year. I actually thought I wouldn't actually see Christmas, not be around for my children and everything. It was like heart struck because I lost my dad at a young age, around about the age my children are now. And so I know what it's like growing up without the father and everything. <laughs> Sophie has motivated herself to look for work. Hi, yeah, I'm just wondering if I can hang the CV in. So I'm interested in makeup. Absolutely. Thank and you. she's now happily employed. So, Sophie, how do you like the look? Yeah, I really like the makeup. You're beautiful. I'm Absolutely not. gorgeous. <laughs> Erica's sister beat her to the operating table and now has a gastric sleeve. I'm pleased, because that's what you want. It looked like I was going to get it first. Yeah. But I, I think maybe it's just better for me, and I need my mind to know what I've got to do. Erica is still waiting for psychological clearance, but hopes to have a gastric bypass next year. <laughs> Deborah has lost nearly 10 stone in nine months and is now looking for work. I mean, when I first got it, I thought used to spill out the sides here. Just the wheelchair to pick up, yeah. Well, I never thought it would ever go, to be honest with you, I never thought it would. Losing weight has been an experience she's happy to share. I weigh 27 stone. There you go. It's the best thing anybody can ever do. That's mine. Next time... People think, oh, you deserve it. You're a fat bastard. You put the pies in. What will I do without my low pack butter? <laughs> and my white processed bread? It's about nine or ten pounds. Oh. How have you achieved it, Deborah? Just I quote, pre-packed salad, rice crisps. Yeah. <laughs> Elephant When I'm a lean, mean bonker machine, <laughs> she's getting kicked into touch. <laughs>